Percy worked hard at the new harbour. The workmen needed stone for their building. Toby helped, but sometimes the loads of stone were too heavy, and Percy had to fetch them for himself. All right, so I was wrong. Turns out we were going to be shown more of this particular harbour. I actually thought, since it was mentioned in Duck Takes Charge, that Top Hat wanted Percy to help him build his new harbour, and that this would end up becoming Brendam Docks. Not so. This is Knapford Harbour. Something completely different. So with now Duck taking care of business back at Knapford Yards, Percy helped Thomas and Toby out with building Knapford Harbor. His main job was bringing the workmen stone from Far Quar Quarry. This is where Toby resided now, remember? But at the harbor, Thomas and Percy weren't the only vehicles around. Nearby was an airfield where regular aircrafts would fly by, like a certain character I've mentioned before. But of them all, the noisiest according to Percy was a helicopter, one day, passing by, Percy found a minute to make small talk with the helicopter. Hello, said Percy. Who are you? I'm Harold, said the helicopter. Who are you? I'm Percy. What really great arms you've got. They're nice arms, said Harold. I can hover like a bird. Don't you wish you could hover? Certainly not. Gee, this scenario feels awfully familiar. A cheeky tank engine meets a non-rail type vehicle and both have a dispute on what's better. Let's see, how about Thomas, Terence, and the Snow from Season 1? Except the difference here is that Harold sounds snooty as compared to Terence. This is exceptionally portrayed through Ringo Starr's narration. The voice Starr gives Harold sounds nasally, in a way that sounds upper class to some degree. It's also the first time Ringo has ever made an alteration in his narrations before. Every other time before this, Starr has narrated each story like a book, keeping his readings consistent with only his voice bringing the story to life. But now we have a character with a new voice. On top of that, Harold added insult to injury by claiming railways were slow, not of much use, and quite out of date. Of course, with that said, Percy was rather upset, and it only confirmed to himself that the airways were nothing but nuisances. But I gotta tell you, that music for Harold's launch progression was pretty awesome. After expressing his frustration to Toby at Farquhar Quarry, Percy took his next train of rock to Knapford Harbor. By the way, this is a nice shot of the quarry. There's obviously still plenty to explore with this, of course, but it's a great introduction to this specific setting. Along with their travels passing by another iconic location, that being the watermill, they realized that Harold was in the vicinity. So with that, Percy and his driver devised a plan to race Harold. So yeah, the way Thomas, Terence, and the snow played out was about not judging a book by its cover. Here, though, both characters feel the opposite side is unreliable, and now they have the opportunity to prove who is better. Although it's odd how Percy's driver thinks Harold and his pilot will figure out that Percy will race them. I don't think anyone has telekinesis on Sodor. Nor did anyone probably ever think they were getting a second memorable theme for this distinctive moment. Hurry, 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 he panted to the trucks. We don't want to, we don't want to, they grumbled. It was no use. Percy was bucketing along with flying wheels, and Harold was high and alongside. Everything in this sequence is awesome. Not only do we get a perfectly orchestrated racing theme between Harold and Percy, but we also get a new camera angle as well. The shot with the bird's eye view looking down on Percy is a sight to see. Who thought viewers would get an aerial view on a railway-based show? Also, we get another glimpse of those upgraded, dastardly, troublesome trucks. Although they are still acting in their dumb old ways of not wanting to move. Percy is flying down the line. What troublesome truck would not want to join in at this point? As Percy reached the harbor, they slowed down. Fearing they might have lost, Percy's fireman reassured him they won. But wait, Percy's fireman didn't have facial hair in the other shots. Lies! Anyway, the reason for them winning was that Harold couldn't find a place to land, leaving him idling in the skies. And with their victory, they sang a song for Percy. Percy loved it. Oh, thank you, he said. 
he liked the last line best of all and was a very happy engine. I hope he would. After all, even if he did lose, racing for that long a distance and speed would probably make an engine's pistons and axles ache. At least based on former stories. This was an entertaining and an intriguing episode to experience for a couple reasons. Like I said, the startup to this story felt a lot like when Thomas met Terence. However, instead of Percy making a snide remark to Harold, he said it with more awe than annoyance in his voice. Now, if he came out and said, what ugly whirly arms you've got, then okay, I don't see anything wrong with Harold making the claim that railways are slow. But that didn't happen, so Harold ends up sounding more like a snobbish character. The question is, will he be of any help to anyone? This was more of a story of Percy verifying to himself, and Harold indirectly, that trains can compete with aircrafts, depending on the situation of course. Harold is also the first character viewers get to see that isn't a land-based vehicle at all. Seeing Harold fly around in various shots looked believable. It's not like he was just attached to a string and just levitated across the screen. He twists, swerves, and hovers. All the characteristics a helicopter has. The set pieces and camera work are much more notable this time as well. Seeing the bird's eye view of Percy while both he and Harold race is an amazing sight. Adding to that are the shots of some revealing locations. Farquhar Quarry is quite the setting. For what's shown, it already looks used and dusty, and that's good. If this was a brand new quarry, it wouldn't make any sense. The watermill is also a fine spectacle. Not many times have we seen natural bodies of running water on the island of Sodor yet. We've seen static pools like in Thomas Goes Fishing, or the island sound where the ocean reaches the edge of Sodor, but nothing like this. Sudri Castle is seen again, as well as the valley area on Thomas's branch line. Last but not least, the music was very much a significant element that helped enhance the story at hand. We get the busy station theme at the start, and Percy's theme later on, but what really stands out is Harold's launch cue and the tune for the race he and Percy have. It's so energetic and alive, it almost feels like it could be applied to any race. Such a great composition. The next episode is The Runaway. Thanks for watching. Thank you.